The man, the fighter on top likes to push his opponent against the fence, but Camun is sort of using it. He's got his back towards the cage a little bit, using it a little bit for leverage at the same time. That triangle choke attempt is in pretty deep. I love it. I wonder to see how deep it is, but Neil Broadman is getting routed. How deep is that? I don't know from our vantage point. We cannot see, but still, that is a pretty deep triangle choke attempt. If Broadbent can just keep maintaining his composure for now, he'll be able to get out of it. There we go. And there we see, it. as you mentioned, right on the money. Neil Broadbent gets out, but his face is worse for wear. Now he's going for a steady try. Rear naked choke attempt. Slipping out of it is Camus. That is what I love about the featherweights. They are so fast, they're so slick, and they get out of position so quickly. Very fluid motion and fast paced action that we have here at Temple League Championship Fighting 3. Decimation at the sold out Jim Tech Arena here in Holy England, Dan. Camus back on top, bro. I mean, figure this, like you say, they're both completely incredibly flexible. There's just no chance of either one of the guys. You never know what's going to happen. Look at the prize submission, and with the two seconds, it can be reversed. All that can be out of it. And Camus wants to stand up as Broadbent, his left eye, buddy. Oh, a knee that connects for Camus. But Broadbent says, you want to fire? I can fire as well. Going for a double leg takedown is Neil Broadbent, and he puts him down. And look at the face of Mohan Camus. Although he knows he can fire on shots and can end the fight, possibly with a combination or two. His face looked like he was discouraged. Like, I cannot believe I got taken down again. And that is the ability and the takedown prowess of Neil Broadbent. He's relentless tonight. He is completely relentless, but Camus is just waiting there. He's just waiting for the right opportunity to strike. He doesn't seem to be wasting much energy getting frustrated by the fact that he was took down, whereas Broadbent's trying to capitalize 24-7. He needs to be careful and make sure he's conserving enough energy to really make the most of what he's trying to do. Right, this is very interesting in how it is on the scorecards as Broadbent is teeing off 10 seconds to go in the second round. Neil Broadbent wearing the blue trunks, wearing the Brazilian flag is Lohan Camus. This is a tremendous featherweight clash. We knew this fight was going to be good, Dan, but it is better than advertised. Robert has been putting in 120% for both rounds. He needs to really just take a step down, get that air in, and finish it in this third. Speaking of finishing, Neil Broadbent before at the end of the round sort of slumped over and you could tell he's tired, he's gassed, he's been working very hard, he's got a cut over his left eye and his right eye's messed up, whereas Camus sort of walked back to his corner. Right now, what are you telling Neil Broadbent in the corner? Personally, for Neil Broadbent, I'm gonna have to say that he's just gonna have to relax, take his time, and apply those shots strategically, rather than going hell for leather. He's gonna be gassed, he's gonna make a few mistakes, and Camus will take advantage of those. Camus, like you said, walked back to his corner, ready and ready to go. Whereas Broadbent looks a little bit gassed. He's gonna have to be careful. This is what Broadbent has been training for for three years. Camus came here. He is not wanting to take a step back. He on it's anybody's fight. Neil Broadbent wearing the blue trunks. Well, hot Camus wearing the Brazilian flag with the venom over the right leg. The third and final round. Here we go. I've got and a feel they're going to be putting 120 percent in this round. They both want to deliver. They've both got impressions to make. Lahan Kimun opening up with a front kick. There's a video on YouTube of Lahan Kimun hitting pads, and we, you could tell he had power, but we, I didn't anticipate this much power that he has. He's just so sharp and accurate with his punches. You can never tell. He made it with the biggest of guys, but he sure can deliver punches with the biggest of the guys. Going for a takedown is Broadbent. He wants to solidify. Pick up. Beautiful takedown. With side control, Neil Broadbent again, and that is that determination, that hunger. Because you can tell Broadbent is gassed, he's exhausted, but he wants the fight. Camun wants it as well, but right now, Neil Broadbent wants a little bit more. How discouraged, Dan, how discouraged do you think Wahan Camun is getting after every round? He has a nice job striking, using his hands, inflicting some punishment upon Neil Broadbent. But again, Broadbent gets the takedown every single round. As a fighter, there is only so long you're going to be able to take it constructively by going down and down and down. Broadbent is keeping on top 24-7, and Camus isn't doing anything. He's going to lose by the score points. Broadbent remaining active, looking to improve his record to 3-1. and one. He is from North London, trains with Alan Orr, fantastic trainer. He's a carpenter by day, fighter by night, and that's where that working attitude comes from. He's a carpenter, and carpenters work very hard, as do cops, but Neil Broadbent is the working man's 
fan here in England, works very hard during the day, then trains, spends three or four hours during training at night, and it's just really remarkable seeing the evolution of Mina Broadbent before our eyes. And give credit to Lohan Kanun, but Broadbent showing a lot of tenacity. Everything you said about Broadbent under the fan is just proof and dedication, showing exactly why he has been dominating for 95% of this fight. You know, I'm gonna feel it. If Kamun doesn't kick something out of the back pretty soon, this one's gonna be over. Kamun is, he's not doing really anything, Dan. He's not doing anything to try to get out of this position. They're instructing him, but he doesn't have that explosiveness. He has the explosiveness with his hands, but his ground game is lacking because he's not able to get out of it. He's not even trying to raise up. He's trying to get out of a bridge a little bit, but still nothing is being done. There's no explosion there. He's just taking that damage constantly and not making any ups to move out of it. Broadbent is grinding out of decision, and that's what, even though he's two and one as a professional, that is what a veteran fighter does. And now, this is where Broadbent got. He's elbows. getting that taste of blood, and he wants to try and seal a deal right here and now. He just secured the left arm or the right arm of Lohan Kemun, and that head is for the taking as Broadbent is just blasting away on the head of Lohan Kemun again. Now all it's left to see is that Broadbent has the gas in him to try and get those blows hit. Neil Broadbent said that he would be surprised if the fight got out of the first round, but he is certainly trained for a three-round war. And now, he's leaving no doubt in the judge's mind. Kim Moon, his steam is slowly declining with every single round. I'm gonna have to agree with you that Kim Moon is slowly, slowly depleting, going down and down and down. Broadbent needs to really get those punches in now and capitalize on the situation he is. Kim Moon is so fatigued here. Broadbent has secured that right arm. He is carving up the face of Lohan Kamun with those vicious, devastating elbows. That was a close call for Kamun. He's now taking blows, hobbles to the side of the head. He's been busted open. I think that nose has been busted open. Yeah, he's bleeding from the nose and it's tripping over to his eye. Neil Broadbent, what an animal he is. He's like a pit bull in there looking. He wants to make sure that he gets the victory here tonight in his comeback fight. As long as Broadbent sees life in Kamun, he's not going to stop punching him in the head. Broadbent is just grinding out a decision. When you taste power and you get rocked, Neil Broadbent went to plan B, went for the takedown, used his ground and pound, and that just shows the transitional period, how easy he's able to adapt. Okay, he got punched several times and was rocked, looked like he may have gone down, went for the takedown, showed his chin. If there was any question about Neil Broadbent's chin, it has been answered here tonight. Both guys are getting extremely tired now, but Broadbent is the only aggressor we see in this fight so far. Lohan Kemun, he is busted open all over his face. He is a red mask right now. His face is a red mask, and he's doing nothing. He's not even using his, he's using his legs a little bit, but not really trying to explode out of it. And when he does, Broadbent puts him right down. We are nearing the final 10 seconds of this fight. Neil Broadbent, Lohan Kemun Broadbent in firm control of this round. And it looks, and that is the end of the fight. Neil Broadbent, it seems, like he is back after a three-year layoff. I think it's safe to say that that match is signed, sealed, and delivered in Broadbent's favor. Ladies and gentlemen, after three five-minute rounds in this professional featherweight contest, sponsored by Malvado, we have a winner and a unanimous decision from the judges. The winner, 
in the red corner.